All right, dudes, in this example, we're looking at a slow-moving ball that rolls down a track and is still in motion as it crosses the first hill. And I've set it so that we're going to disregard frictional forces. So let's check out what we have here. Over on this side, I have what I would call my initial conditions. All right, the initial potential energy, the initial kinetic energy. We have over here work. This is positive work where energy is put into a system, and this will be considered negative work where energy is removed from a system. And lastly, this would be the final conditions. And in this case, the final conditions refer to the conditions at the top of the second hill. I'm going to label this my initial conditions, this is the ball as it initially is coming in. So what we have here is a slow-moving ball. So this ball definitely has an initial velocity that I'm going to call greater than 1. All right, I'm just making up the number 1. I just, need, I just need to illustrate, though, that it does have a velocity. And it's going to roll down a track, and it's still in motion as it crosses the second hill, too. So I clearly am going to have a final velocity here of probably greater than I started out because I've gone downhill. I've also told that I'm going to disregard frictional forces. If I'm going to disregard frictional forces, that means there is going to be no negative work. And what I'm looking at here is only a potential energy and kinetic energy scenario. Typically, scientists like to take a potential energy and say PE equals MGH, which is the mass times the gravity times the height of an object. And usually the height is going to be the distance between the lowest point in the system and the highest point in the system. So what we're going to see here is that I'm going to say initially... I'm just going to give this a lot of potential energy. It's at the top of a hill, and so I'm going to say we have about five you know, units of potential energy. Let's just call them units in this case. We call them joules, too. Because it's in motion, I'm also going to say we have about one unit of kinetic energy. There has been no work done on the ball. The ball simply rolls down the hill and then rolls back up the other hill and we disregard friction. So we're really not seeing any positive work being done on the ball. So the question is, what does the bar graph on the other side look like? Now clearly the ball does have some PE because it definitely has a little bit of height. So it definitely is going to have some PE. The question is how much? Now let's look over here. Initially I started out with one, two, three, four, five bars of kinetic energy and one more bar, five bars of potential energy, I'm sorry, and one more bar of kinetic energy. So all together, my initial conditions, I'm just going to say I have six bars or six units of energy. The energy is not lost because there's no friction. Therefore, on the final side, I should also see six bars. And that's what I'm trying to drive a point here across. The conservation of energy says that the the law of conservation of energy says that the energy must be conserved. We must have to account for it. So let's say this. I'm down a little lower. I'm down about halfway. So I'm going to give myself about three bars of potential energy at the very end here because I've decreased my height. But if I have six bars altogether and three have already been used, I'm going to say now that my kinetic energy will have increased. So I might have lost some potential energy, but I've also gained some velocity. And by gaining some velocity... I've gained some final, uh, I've gained some kinetic energy as well. So in the long and the, the short of this is that I have kind of a big PE on this side initially and a little KE. And over here what we're seeing is that my KE is going to increase and my PE is going to decrease. In this example, a car cruises up a hill at constant velocity and we're going to disregard friction. So what we're looking at here is that the car is definitely moving in in the initial conditions with some velocity. I'm going to call it, let's just call it two bars, all right, two units of velocity. And because he is moving in with our constant velocity, I'm just going to say on the other side, I have to have the same amount of velocity, now, same amount of kinetic energy. Now bear in mind, kinetic energy equals one-half mv squared. And because his velocity doesn't change, neither does his kinetic energy. But what we're going to see, though, is that let's just call the starting point zero. He has zero elevation or zero height, so he has really no potential energy initially. 
At the end, though, he's clearly gone up a certain height. And so he definitely has more potential energy on that side. We can call it whatever we want, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. But the point is, we start out with no, no potential energy, and now we have some. I'm just going to call it 3. And it's a pretty arbitrary that I'm picking 3. You can pick whatever you want. The whole thing is that over here I have 0, 0 height. And over here I have a lot more. You could have also said I came in at 1 as an elevation. But the point is, over here you should have something greater than 1, a 2, a 3, or a 5. So I'm simply saying my final is up there. So how did we get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 bars of energy when we only started out with 2? Where did it come from? In this case, we'd have to assume that the car is doing work as it goes up the hill. In order for the car to go up the hill, the engine must be on, the gas must be pressed, and it must be doing some work applying a force to the car over a certain distance. And so positive work in this case was done. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 bars of positive energy and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 bars of positive energy on this side as well. Why don't you try this one, guys? Take a shot at it and take a shot at all the remainder ones as we go through here and just press pause. I'll come back with my answer after you get done with yours. And now I see a typo here. A car approaches a hill and coasts up the hill until it stops. In this case, we're going to disregard friction. So if we're disregarding friction, that means we're disregarding our negative energy. And we're not looking at it from a negative energy standpoint. We're simply looking at it from a conservation of energy standpoint. The initial conditions. Well, my potential energy at the bottom, I'm going to say it's pretty low because I'm at the bottom of a hill, and therefore I really don't have much height, so my MGH is kind of small, and so I'm just going to call it zero right now for my PE. On the other side, I definitely have gained height, and therefore PE equals MGH, I definitely have an H, and so let's just call it a couple boxes here. All right, I got three units of potential energy. All right, dudes, so where did I get this potential energy from? Where did that three units come from? I must have been conserved. The car is coasting up a hill, so that means no work is being done by the engine. So the car, though, approaches the hill. As it approaches it, it is moving. And because it is moving, it has kinetic energy. And how many units of kinetic energy does it have? Let's just call it three. And I'm choosing three because if I end with three units of potential energy, that would prove that my energy had been conserved. Now, let's just say you said it was coming in with four units of kinetic energy. I would expect you would have, in this case, four units of potential energy. And that's mainly because we are disregarding friction. And there is no work done on the object, either positive or negative. Now, in this case, uh, my typo does continue here. A car approaches a hill and coasts up the hill until it stops. But in this case, we are going to consider friction. We're considering friction. So that means I am looking at this case at a little bit of negative work. Now, you can choose however many boxes you want. I'm just going to throw down there's one box or one unit of negative energy. Now, that means on the final side, I should see one less unit of energy that I have on the other side. Now, this car is approaching the hill, so it definitely has some velocity. And let's just call it, it's coming in with four units of kinetic energy. And once again, I'm just using four units. You could have used five. I'm saying it has no potential energy because it's at the bottom of the hill, and that's my low point. And so I'll call that height at that point zero meters. Okay, well, if it is going up a hill and it's going to reach a certain height here, I definitely have some potential energy going on. But the point is, I have to have a little less energy than I started with because I lost some due to friction. So where I had one, two, three, four boxes of kinetic energy, at this side, I'm only going to have three. And how about this? What about kinetic energy? Do I have any kinetic energy? It's going to stop. And because it stops, it defines the fact that I have zero kinetic energy because I have zero velocity. So what you're looking at here is that I went in to the hill with four units of 
kinetic energy, energy based upon my velocity. I lost one unit due to negative energy of friction, which takes away the energy and slows my car down, removing my kinetic energy. At the same time, my kinetic energy has been converted into potential energy. So the energy is still there, but just now in the form of potential energy. In this example, a skier begins at rest and goes down a hill. In the valley between the hills, she uses her poles to gain some speed. And as she crosses the first hill, she is still in motion. And we're going to look at the conditions now of my initial being right here and my final being at the top of the hill. Now, granted, she's still in motion as she continues on, but we're just going to take a snapshot of her finally right there. So a skier begins at rest, and because I'm beginning at rest, my initial kinetic energy is going to be right down here at zero. And I'm definitely in motion as I cross my second hill, so I do know I'm going to have some sort of kinetic energy over the second hill. Now I do so you see that in the valley between the hill, she uses her poles to gain some speed. So you're looking at some positive work happening right here. And as she crosses the first hill, she is still in motion. And we're going to disregard frictional forces. When we disregard frictional forces, we're simply going to put an X over our negative work. So we're just pretending that there's no friction in the snow. We do have positive work going on here. And so I'm simply just going to make it really easy for us. I'm going to say there's one box of positive work. And so she's doing one box of positive work here in the valley between the two hills. Now, she definitely is coming in with some potential energy. Her PE is based upon her mass times gravity times height. And so I'm picking the lowest point right there and saying, here is our height right here. So she definitely has some PE. And let's just call it uh, four boxes of potential energy. Now that's positive energy. And as she goes down the hill, it's, it is converted into kinetic energy. And as she goes down, she has both kinetic energy and also potential energy. But we see down here that she's doing some work. And she goes back up a little bit more of a hill. Uh, a little bit less of a hill, and we see her finish off right here. So it's probably halfway up. So halfway up in the previous hill, I'm going to call two boxes of potential energy. All right, guys. Well, let's look at this now. How fast am I going on this side over here? Well, we've also gained a box of positive energy. So that's one box right there, and plus these four. So I have five boxes of energy. So I'm looking at five units of positive energy that I need to see on this side as well. So we look at this, how fast is she going? Well, I'm going to say her kinetic energy is based upon her velocity. She's moving pretty good. I'm going to give her three boxes of positive energy. Altogether, that will equal the five units that I had initially. So my potential energy and work have been converted into a little less potential energy and also a little more kinetic energy. A ball at rest rolls down a track and finishes in motion. So we see a ball that is at rest. So my initial velocity is going to be zero meters per second, and it's going to finish in motion. In motion simply means my final velocity is going to be greater than zero. Along the way, we are going to consider significant frictional forces. That means we're going to have a lot of work happening here. Now, I'm going to assign this point here height equals zero, and let's just call this height equals greater than zero. The point is, I do have potential energy when I begin, and to make the system easy, I'm going to define this as where potential energy I don't have at all. So in final conditions, I'm not going to have any PE, and let's just call it whatever you want to call it. Let's call it, we have a massive amount of PE. We have the top of the mountain right here, right? So this is what we got here, guys. We got five units of PE going on. Now, because I'm at rest, I have no KE. Now, this problem is given us significant frictional forces. So when it's significant frictional forces, I'm going to choose four bars of frictional. You could have chosen three, but the fact that it said significant, I kind of would, you know, go a little bigger than uh, smaller in this example. So what we're looking at here is that you have about five units of positive work, four units of negative work, and therefore... On the final conditions, I should only be looking at one unit of positive work. And because I don't have any potential energy, it's all going to exist as my guy is going, but he's going slow. 
But even though he's slow, when he's moving slow, he still has kinetic energy because kinetic energy is based on velocity. In this example, we have a skier in motion that skis down a hill and up another hill. And there's enough friction that stops the skier. So in this case, we have a skier that's in motion, so we definitely have some kinetic energy. We definitely have potential energy because here's our height. And my height is always relative to what I would call the lowest elevation. And on this side, we also have some height as, as well, but not as much as we did originally. So I'm going to say we have about half the potential energy on the other side. And so I'm going to use this right here. And I'm going to call out right off the bat, I have about four units of P. And I chose four simply because on the other side, it would be easy just to say I have half and I have about two on that side. Now my skier is in motion, so I'm going to give the skier a little bit of kinetic energy. Let's just call it one box of kinetic energy. And on the other side, I don't have any kinetic energy. It's enough friction that stopped the skier. So what do I got here? I have about five units of positive energy over here. I have about two units of positive energy over here. Where'd the energy go? I must have had three units of negative energy that was removed from the system due to friction. And that's kind of one of the dominating themes that I want you to see here is that energy is always accounted for. And if you don't have it at the end, you lost energy, we say it was, you know, work was done on the object to remove that energy. And work was done by the force of friction. The force was acting over this entire distance. Remember from the beginning, work equals a force that acts over a distance. And this here is my distance. All right, guys, a skier is at rest and skis down a hill and up another hill. But in this case, we're going to disregard friction. We're going to pretend that friction is not here. So if friction is not here, we're going to have zero as our negative work. And it doesn't even mention any work whatsoever. So this positive work is not even there. And this problem is going to be super duper easy. Let's just say I'm going to start out with, we'll call it four units of PE like I had last time. And I'm saying I'm about halfway up to where I was originally. Maybe that's not exactly true, but I'm close enough. So I'm going to finish off with some potential energy because I definitely have some height relative to the lowest point. I definitely have a little height over here, not as much as the height that I have over here. So if I started out with four units of potential energy and I'm starting at rest, which is zero Ke, where does my energy go? Okay, where does my energy go? The energy can only be conserved. And if it's not going away to work, it must be going into kinetic energy. And in this case, if I have four units over here, the two I have for potential, I must be balancing out with two that were converted into kinetic energy as well. So I do have four units of energy on this side too. All right, guys, that's all for now. Uh, thanks a lot for tuning in, and hope it was helpful. Later.